Hello boys, we're doing uh, another book. I am just powering through these so fast. I'm, uh, oh, my chest is out. So we're going through the international book along list. There's 13 books. I don't know if I'll make it to the end, but I, I'm gonna power. I'm gonna power for it. Um, <clears throat> I've read four of them, and so far they've been um, uh, average to good. They've been better than I, I thought they were gonna be. Um, and this is the third one that I've read, and this one I unfortunately cannot say the same for. So this third one we're going to review is called The Gospel According to the New World, starring me. So I went into Mum's room, and I said, can I take your white bathrobe and be Jesus for my next video? And she was like, get the f- So this book, The Gospel According to the New World, is written by a Caribbean author called Maurice Cond. I did not pronounce that right, I guarantee it. She wrote this uh, fantastic book called Segu. Um, which I remember absolutely loving, even though it's been a while since I've read it. Um, and this book I was particularly interested in reading just because I was like, oh, she's written a new book, like, I, I can't believe I didn't hear about that at all. And obviously she's written more than just Segu, but I haven't been compelled to check any of it out. But now that this is on a long list, I was like, gotta, gotta see it. Um, and I did not like it at all. Um, I very nearly hated it. It was close. So this book is um, a satire. I, I do that. A satire of the New Testament. Oh, famously an impenetrable comedic source. Um, and it follows the life of uh, a, a guy called Pascal who is um, rumored to be the Messiah even though He's just a... he is just a very naughty boy. He... he truly is. He's not coming out, and that's my final word! A shovel! No! This book was kind of nothing. Uh, I was shocked by how little it attempted. Uh, especially considering that uh, Segu, I remember being like very, like, expansive. And it was doing a lot, and it was trying to do things. And... and this book was like an actual like, piece of cardboard. It was a piece of driftwood. I couldn't believe how how little it attempted with its uh, satirical premise. Ah. So the whole point is that this character Pascal is, I guess, trying to do some good in the world or something like that, or he's just trying to navigate through the modern the modern life uh, in, in the Caribbean or in and around that area. I think he goes to a Asuncion at some point. Um, but the the point of that would surely be to show the conflict between the Bible and modern day. That would be the point of it, right? And then this book just doesn't do that. It just has this main character, who isn't the Messiah, um, who just every now and again attempts to do a good thing, and then that's it. Like, it's not... it's not... big. It's not uh, trying to do anything at all. It's just nothing. So the other point is because it's a satire, the, the author has to put in Christian imagery. And every single bit of Christian imagery in this is like some of the worst I've ever seen. Like the, he literally has a disciple called Judas. And there's a, his friend is called Lazarus and he's like sick. And I'm like, what's the point of, I can just read the New Testament. What, you're not doing anything. You're just putting them in modern day. And that is all that happens. Judas is, um, flamboyantly gay and he becomes a government minister. Okay, does that mean anything? What are you saying? Why is the, why is that in there? It's just nothing. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's like there's, there's, there's even a scene where they do the Last Supper and there's fucking 12 disciples and he says the lines and I'm like, what the fuck is this? I could just read this. Why do I, why do I have to, why is this book, this book is not saying anything. It's just doing it. <laughs> it's just doing it in the modern day. It doesn't have any life lesson or point to it. It's just retelling it. But what's the point of a retelling if you're not like showing us something new? Like, what's the point? Things happen in the book absolutely out of nowhere. And we'll talk about the ending in a bit because I, I did laugh out loud at the ending and how like hard it attempted to be uh, um, uh, emotional. <laughs> um, things just happen. The main character, his name's Pascal. Um, and he's a big, broad boy with big muscles, and he's got a big cock, apparently, and he uh, keeps uh, seducing women, or they seduce him, and every time he meets a new woman, he's like, this is the love of my life, I love this woman to death, and I'm like, oh, oh did I ask? Uh, he marries someone, and then he abandons his foster mother, he's like, no, I want to be with my new wife, and that's just literally in a sentence, and then she goes, she says something mean to him, so he's like, fuck this bitch, I'm out, and then it's a different woman, and it just keeps doing that, and I don't know why making him like a Don Juan, like, really sort of seductive, moustache-twirling man 
why that matters or why that changes anything. My chest really is out, isn't it? I can feel it. It was at about page 50 or 60 in, and I was, I was enjoying it at the beginning because I didn't know where it was going. I was like, oh, I like that this is a setup, kind of like a comedy of errors, where he does have a mother and he does have a father, at least theoretically, and then this other couple just find him and insist that he's the son of God. That was funny. Um, but then by about page 50 or 60, I, I just did not give a fuck. I could not believe how little I cared. For a Maurice Cond book! I love Segu! I want to read it again, just to make sure that my opinions on that were justified. I did like the, the internal conflict of Jesus was like, What's my life for? What is my purpose? Why am I here? And obviously when you're looking into uh, modern readings of the Bible and Jesus as like a flawed person, like the last temptation of Christ or something, that's another thing, is that if you're treating him like as a, as a, as a human, uh, then he obviously has to have those dynamics to him because he has these ridiculous life goals that he has to live up to and he is the son of God but he is also a man and he's full of the folly of man, right? That's, that's surely the case. Um, but, uh, Pascal's response to this crisis is to just bang a bitch. It's not really a parody because it isn't particularly strongly satirical of the Bible itself uh, and, like, the values of it. If it was a satire of the Bible, I would care for it less than if it was, like, uh, showing the conflict between the Bible and modern day, and I'll get to that as a point in a bit. But it's not a satire because it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not funny, it's not trying to do anything. It's not an epic because its characters are characterless and nothing happens. Well, lots of things happen, but none of them have any weight or meaning. Um, so it's, it's nothing. One of the lines is literally, it appeared that if Pascal was not the son of God, he was very much a troublemaker. And I was like, oh, just flashes of life of Brian just appear. Oh, my God. Oh. Things just happen and not in a satisfying way because, again, like I said, the characters are pieces of cardboard. He falls in love with a woman and then the woman goes, actually, I was seeing someone else. And then she leaves him. And that was like five or ten pages. And I was like, you could just cut those five or ten pages out. They didn't, like, what was, why did that? In the, in the grand scope of the Bible, why did that matter? Why did you, why did you put that in? You could take that out easily. Then his wife comes back to him after leaving him and was like, sorry, I was wrong. I, I was, I misinterpreted something. And he's like, oh, it's all good. And then they move back in together. And I was like, duh, 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 duh. this doesn't matter. I'm getting really cold. <laughs> all right, here's another quote. He devoted some days to writing a book he called Just a Word or Two, which would be his major work wherein he intended to prove that this globalization, which we're sick and tired of hearing about, was in fact a modern form of slavery. That's like the level of socio-political detail this book is on. It's just, what if we mention these words? What if we just have these words said? Oh, globalization and slavery. But the book is not about that. It's not about any of that. And I wish it were, because that would be awesome. If he goes to like a UN summit or something, that would be great. That would be a satire. It would be funny. But it isn't. He just... Dicks about in the in like a sunshine and just like bags bitches. That's it. It's so boring. I can't believe it. It's so bad. Calm yourself, Alex. Come on, you are the figure of peace. This book could go the satire route, which would be good if it if it went really hard, or it could go the socio-political detail route, which I would prefer, but is also pretty good, where we see the conflict of the Bible and its values and the idea of a messiah having to deal with the modern day and things like terrorism and that. That's what I thought this book was going to be going into it, but it was not that. It rides the middle lane like a BMW that doesn't know how to overtake, and I cannot stand it. Well, I say ride the middle lane, it doesn't even do that. It doesn't even get, it doesn't even start driving. It hasn't even left the driveway yet. It, it, it claims it's a satire and a parody because it takes place in the real world or in the modern world. But that's so easy, because the character doesn't act like the messiah, and it doesn't matter that he is. It's so easy. I could do that. I could write a Jesus who, who comes to Australia in the modern day, and he comes to Sydney, and he, he walks around the CBD, and instead of, instead of getting crucified, he just gets forced to do burnouts in Bankstown until he dies of exhaustion. I'm, I'm always going to be honest on my channel, okay? I'm always going to be honest. There was a point about page 100 where I skipped 20 pages just to see if there would be a point where I would get held up and I would not know what was happening. And it didn't happen! It didn't happen! I skipped 20 pages and nothing changed! Now I went back and read those pages just to be, just to be clear, and yeah, I was right! I could have just <laughs> taken them out, ripped them out of the book, duh, it doesn't matter. Alright, the book at one point says, On the point of losing hope, Pascal found an unexpected opportunity to achieve an old dream, that of building a school. But that it doesn't 
he builds, like, it doesn't lead into a life lesson or a value like the Bible. Well, it kind of does. That's like the one time it does where he's talking to this little girl and the little girl's like, well, some bad things happen. And Pascal's like, hey, listen, I don't, I don't fucking know. Uh, but, like, it's not... It's, it's not a, a, a value or like a fable like Jesus tells. It's just spam. It is just spam. And I cannot deal with it. Another quote that came to me was when Pascal was talking about his father, God. You could blame him for much more serious crimes, such as colonization, and while you're at it, why not exile, dispossession, and racism? I want to see that! I want to see that developed in real physical detail, in real time. I want to see the Messiah having to deal with that. Because the Messiah in the, in the Bible has to deal with um, the Jewish people that don't believe in him. He has to deal with everybody not believing in him. And he has to deal with the fact that he's the son of God, right? And you can just take that and put that in the modern day. And you can add so many other things to it. And you can turn him into a tragic figure the same way, right? You can do that. But this book doesn't. If you were to combine this, because this book is obsessed with colonialism, because that's what Maurice Conn is obsessed with, even though it doesn't fit in the book. If you were to combine this book with, like, Paradise, the Abdul Razak Gurna book I reviewed, then this book would be fucking awesome. It would be great. But it doesn't. <laughs> it's just spam. Please, please write something better. This book made me very mad for how little it tried to do. I don't know why this is on the long list. If it gets on the short list, you're going to get a very funny reaction out of me. There were a lot of other things that didn't matter as well. I wasn't sure why his positionality ever mattered. Like, he would be in a different spot talking to the same three or four people, and it wouldn't matter that he is in that different spot because you never really get a, uh, a sense of, like, like his interaction to the environment. Every now and again, a person will come up to you like, you're the son of God, but other than that, it's like, totally just tell, not show. Like, it's just like, he did this thing, and he was sad about it. Like, yeah, okay. Like, I, if you're writing in that style to mimic the New Testament, that's fine and all, but it's not mimicking the New Testament. It's just, like, spamming some stuff at the main character until he dies. It's like, okay. Near the end of the book, the book starts to try and have some, like, life lessons, or try to pretend that it all meant something, and that was really embarrassing. So, Pascal, in, like, the second last chapter, he meets another woman, and he, and he sleeps with her again. Ah, oh, so, so interesting. Wow, such a satire to show Jesus fucking people. Oh my gosh, so, so ingenious. Um, so he, he sleeps with this other girl, and then she says this, like, life lesson. Uh, let me try and find it. Instead of brooding over all these thoughts in your head, be content with loving me, for it's the good Lord who has brought us together. She was probably right, says the book. But this is just some bitch we barely know. How could the book be so magnanimous about that? Because that doesn't... This isn't like a final revelation about a relationship that he's had. It's just not like it's nothing. It just keeps spamming. Please, I, I actually felt myself going a little mad while I was reading this because I was I I couldn't sleep because I've COVID and I was up at like just just past one reading this and I and I genuinely felt like I was going insane. Like I could. <laughs> and then once we got to the ending of the main character, um, uh, which was absolute fucking bullshit by the way. I don't know if I should spoil it. Yeah, why not? I'll spoil it. The main character dies in a plane crash. <laughs> And it doesn't necessarily, it isn't so out of place with the rest of the book. And I was kind of expecting at that point a weird ending like that. I wasn't expecting it to peter off. I thought it would end with him dying in a weird way. Just, I don't know why I had that assumption, but I was right. Um, and when that happened, I was like, whatever, like, who cares? Um, but then there's an epilogue. And, oh boy, that epilogue pissed me off. Thanks to the love between two individuals, thanks to their hearts beating in unison, an individual can put up with suffering, disillusionment, and humiliation of all sorts, and that only this love can transfigure the world and make peace on earth. That's the final line of the book, and I was, I, I read that and I went, so that's the, that's the dot point, that's the thesis of the book, is that you have to focus on the fact that he is just nutting in everyone, and that's apparently the way that he makes peace on earth. That's how I'm translating that sentence. <laughs> because the rest of the book, he doesn't, like, he's torn on certain things, but he doesn't act on that torn stuff in a way that Jesus would. He just doesn't, like, it doesn't happen. He just kind of sits there. And the only thing that he does that has, like, forward-moving action to it is, is, again, banging babes. And apparently the book implies that by doing that and having the love in his heart to do that, then he can make peace on earth. Because he says, the book says, the book says, two individuals, thanks to their hearts being in unison, and only this love can transfigure the world. So it's about the love between two individuals, specifically. 
and he shows that love in only one way, which is by banging. <laughs> I really didn't expect this from Maurice Cond, and because I've forgotten this book pretty much immediately, and I respect her, um, and I I love Segu. But this book just fell flat for me because I did not respect its goals at all. I did not respect what it was trying to do. Um, and that's about it for me. I mean, I'm angry enough to give it a three. I don't know. It's a three or a four for sure. It might be, it might actually be a four because it's, it's more just boring and it doesn't have a point. It wasn't offensively bad the whole time. Well, actually, that's not true. That's not true because I was offended by, um, how much it was pretending it was doing. Yeah, I'll give it a three. I'll give it a three. Fuck this book. Yeah. Yeah, so that's another one of the book along list done. Now we can do our ranking so far. Our ranking so far from what we've read on this channel is Ninth Building, Boulder, The Gospel According to the New World. Very cool. We're powering through this list, boys. I'm sure I'll have another one for you out in the next, uh, probably in less than a week, hopefully. Um, thank you guys for watching again. Um, stay cool and try to achieve that peace on Earth. Oh, come and, come and bathe my feet. Uh -huh.